I want to propose a challenge. I'm going to attempt to split it down the back with the cleaver. Cleaver, Lamb, Seth and Scott are each going to split their own. I think I just bought a Lamb. Today, we're taking Seth out of his element. Check it out. My girl, after 30 years of bandsaw butchery, Seth does not get to use the bandsaw today. So we have the tools of the trade right here in front of us. And throughout this conversation, we kept talking about how we really don't incorporate a cleaver. We're taking Seth out of his comfort zone today. Three lambs, gonna work through them today with just the tools of the trade that you see on the back of the shirt. Couple cleavers on deck. There's your tools, bro. It's kind of like your competition out in Hollywood where you were given a flint knife, but nothing flint here. If I'd have had my, if I'd have had my druthers, I would have put a bandsaw on the back of this shirt. Um, everybody has access no, to a bandsaw. It'll be, it'll be fine. I'm not too concerned. Uh, lambs, these all range from 58 pounds down to 55 pounds. So it's not like breaking down a beef or something like that. Um, yeah, let's have fun with it. We have two different cleavers we're gonna use. This one just happened to be given to me by none other than Brock Lesnar himself. So this one came from Brock Lesnar. I'm gonna be using this one. And then I'm also gonna be using this NSF rated cleaver. Just see which one we like better. Obviously you can see a difference in size. Big weight difference. Uh, I sharpened this one a little bit on our stone this morning. So how much cleaver butchery have you done to date? Zero. So you get to see Master Butcher. Oh, that's a lie. Amazon's cheapest knives. Was, Was there a cleaver roll in there? there? Roll, oh, roll, oh, roll oh, the oh, footage. Oh. I'm not really a meat cleaver guy. I so had to throw a meat cleaver maybe. <laughs> Normally I would use my saw, but let's give the old meat cleaver a test. A little chop chop action. So he's used a cheap corrected. cleaver. So you get to see Seth outside of his comfort zone doing something he's virtually done zero of in his butchery journey so far should be a fun one so something that we didn't have on our tools of the trade shirt was a meat hook um we wanted to put it on there but it just didn't look right in the format on the shirt so i guess i'm going to be ditching this today too let's just get started So a honing rod and a six inch boning knife, those made it to the back of the shirt, which I'm super thankful for because this is a fantastic combination. So I'm just gonna start the process by moving these flanks back a little bit. We wanna find that bone right at the base of that sirloin and that hip. I'm just gonna make my first cut right through the meat. Now, what I am allowed to use is my hand saw because it made it to the shirt. So I'm gonna start with just breaking these two legs off of that loin, just like that. Now, I'll remove the flank. So during this process, I'm going to be putting the trimmings over on the boning table, but Sean will be working over there. Teams all over the place. We got a team over here. We got a team over there. We got a team over there. One big team. Yeah. Mm. Mm. What are you Camera doing section. in there? Scott's running an Instagram story, so if you don't follow us on Instagram, go follow the Bearded Butchers on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter. Over four million followers now on social media, so, and almost two million right here on YouTube. So I've got the leg, both leg portions off, and I'm gonna break this down into the primal sections, and then from there, we're gonna go through each primal section, and we'll break it down even further. So the next step I wanna do, I'm just gonna reach inside this cavity, I'm gonna count um, one, two, three, four, five ribs over. And I'm gonna break this down between the fifth and sixth rib on the shoulder. So I just wanna make a, make a mark. And then I'm gonna grab my hand saw. We're gonna separate the shoulder 
from this loin. And here I'm going to go in with a 8 inch breaking knife. It's a little bit more handsaw action. So if you are breaking down any carcasses like this at home, we're going to show you that you can do this process with just those tools on the back of our shirt. And oh, by the way, we think every butcher, whether you're in America or not, and every fan of butchering, if you're a carnivore and you're meat enthusiast, barbecue, whatever it is, you've got to have one of these shirts. So shoulder, that's the saddle, that loin portion, and there's the legs. I'm going to start with the legs and we're going to go this direction. So next step, I'm just going to break right between these legs down through that bone. Once we get through that bone, pretty simple process. Now we have two legs. Trim this up a little bit. Now I'm going to remove the shank. There's the shank. Now what I want to do is I want to remove this H bone and this sirloin. I could cut the sirloin off as a whole piece and do it that way if I wanted, but I'm just going to leave this bone whole and then I'll cut the just the boneless portion off once I get this piece out. Sort of like doing a, a deer basically. So normally I would have put this up on the bandsaw and I would have made a cut. Um, I would have squared this up and then I would have cut my sirloin chops. But since I'm not permitted to use a bandsaw today, this is how we're going to do it. So now that I got that bone removed, leave it like that for a second. Now I'm going to grab my eight inch knife and I'm going to cut the sirloin off of this leg. So there you have a beautiful lamb sirloin. You can leave this as a roast. You can cut it into some steaks today. I'm going to cut that into some steaks. We'll get to that in a second. So now, Let's just make this a boneless leg of lamb. Just remove this femur. Get that femur out of there. And there is a gland right here so I want to get that gland out of there and I think today what we're going to do is we're going to roll this and we're going to tie it and make some nice boneless rolled leg of lamb I do want to get this USDA stamp off it's completely edible and safe for human consumption but we're going to remove it so there we have the leg all prepped up and I can roll it and then I will tie it. Leg number two, we're gonna repeat the process that we did on the first one. And then once I get it all broke down, we're gonna go back through and we'll cut and we'll roll and tie on all the individual cuts. So leg number two. got our two legs all broke down. Now we want to move through each individual piece and let's process it just a little bit further. So normally I would set these up on my bandsaw and just bust this little end of this hock off there, but I got to use a handsaw today. 
and I wouldn't be able to get through this bone with that cleaver, so I gotta use the hand saw. There's the lamb shanks. If you want some asabuco, these are gonna be for you. So there we have two hind lamb shanks. Keep in mind, we are saving all the bones. Make some great lamb soup. Good soup. So this is that sirloin. These are boneless, so I will not be needing the cleaver to go down through here. Uh, there's no bone in it. The cleaver is going to be more for chopping through that bone. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut these into some beautiful boneless lamb sirloin chops. And like I mentioned, you can leave these as a roast if you wish. But today we're cutting them into sirloin chops for our retail store. So just a nice one inch thick slice with that eight inch Victorinox breaking knife. Actually. Boy, don't those look delicious. So there you have six beautiful lamb boneless sirloin chops. Okay, now what we want to do is we're just going to take some of our butcher twine and we're going to roll and tie these legs. Makes a great way to present these legs for the consumer. So we're just going to get these all tied up. And of course you could have left the bone in this if you wanted and we will do some that way today but for these we're making them boneless. A lot of people have different techniques for tying butch butcher string. This is mine. I've been doing it for nearly 30 years this way and it works great for me so if you have a different style that you like by all means go for it but for me this is what I do I cross my string just like you're going to be tying a knot and then I I just do this little twist here so sometimes I don't even think about it when I'm doing it and then I keep it loose and as you pull it it tightens up like that and then you double knot it and you trim it off so there you have a nice rolled and tied leg of lamb so just wrapping up this second leg Nice, beautifully tied, rolled, rolled and tied leg of lamb. So there's your hind leg portion. Next, it's that saddle. This is where the, where the uh, cleaver is going to come into action. So first thing I want to do, grab my hand saw, cut that breast bone in half. Now what I want to do is I want to split this entire section. There we go. So maybe on the next one we'll maybe on the next one we'll use a we'll use a cleaver. Precision. So I've got just a little bit more. I wanted to save it for some cleaver action. I do want to be careful on my tables. That I don't put big chunks in my tables. Would have thought a bandsaw did that. Did I get it pretty close? It's pretty good. I'm kind of breathing a little heavy. I want to propose a challenge 
on this lamb, I'm actually going to challenge myself if you're comfortable with it. I'm going to attempt to split it down the back with the cleaver. I've got a bigger challenge. I got to do it with my eyes closed. There's two lambs. Who can do the better job? You're going to do one and I'm going to do one with your cleaver of choice. Do you want to do it right now? No. Let's wait. We'll get this done. Okay. We're going to make the audience wait. We're going to finish breaking down this lamb. And then at the end of this video, it's going to be a challenge. We're going to do some French chops today. I'm going to start by cutting through that bone there, cutting through the rib bones here. So now I can break these down even further. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's how long you want your section to be. I'm going to give the cleaver a whirl now that I cut through that meat. There we go. I'm going to trim the loin portion up. We're going to cut some loin chops out of this. I'm just going to prep these and then I'll go into cutting some chops. Eight. Now that I have the both loins ready to go, I'm going to cut some chops. So I already know with this cleaver, it's going to be easier if I tried to shoot for each of these, you know, where these cartilages, where, the, where that break is, but that might be a little bit too thick. So I'm just going to see how it does driving it down through the bone um, at whatever thickness chop that I want. So I'm going to start by just cutting a nice, you know, inch or so thick chop. And I want to cut through that meat first, like that. So I'm just going to go down through and make my cuts with my knife first. And now, I wonder. Some of this I might not have to chop as much as just like, we'll see. I know aim, aim is going to be important. This is where I feel like you could really butcher things up. How you feeling, bro? The first chop went really good. The second one was a little bit harder because I hit one of those rib bones. And I think I'm Mostly worried about the table, damaging my table. I know it's killing, it's killing Seth's OCD, isn't it? Yeah. To do this, because he's got, he's going to be looking at this and he'd be like, ah, if I had my soul, I could just zoom, zoom. He's probably going to, he's probably going to eat one, <laughs> two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lamb chops for dinner tonight. So that way they don't go out in the meat case. And you have to understand, when he was in competition, they were literally taking a ruler and measuring one edge to the other edge. So that sticks with you, doesn't oh, it? Oh, absolutely. I think, I think you did a great job. Thank you. I've got, so, one, I've got one more to go through. I think that the, 
knack for it would definitely, as you would, as you use more of it. And uh, the other thing is, is if I had a wooden wood, wood block. wood, wooden block that I didn't have to worry about damaging, because right now my biggest fear is is damaging this table. There's my loin chops. Like Scott mentioned, I'm, it went okay, but obviously with a bandsaw, you're gonna get it a little bit more precise and there's probably butchers all over the world that are gonna be like, that's not how you use a cleaver. Well, it's probably not because I'm not here to claim I know how to effectively use one, but got the job accomplished with those. All right. So the next thing to do, I feel like I, I need to jump in somewhere. Is there anywhere I can help you? You want to sing to me? <laughs> You're doing a great job on your first day with a meat cleaver. I'm sure on day 10,061, it will seem like second nature but today on your first day you're doing a wonderful job with the meat cleaver all right you can stop i had a whole nother verse <laughs> so here i'm just removing that top of that vertebrae oh dang i can't use my meat hook this is where i always use my meat hook it's not on the shirt nope we're gonna have to put it on the shirt i suggested it but it didn't look right in the format so We'll get her. There's one. So making these French racks, I am going to get my handsaw out and go through that little piece of that shoulder blade bone right there. Let's just get these trimmed up. We're gonna French these ribs, and this will be a Frenched rack of lamb. Let's remove this little bone. That's that bottom end of that shoulder blade. Let's take the rest of those bones out in this little patty whack. So once we get that off, I can, I always start right here at the bottom of these ribs where it meets that loin and I just make a cut horizontally through that meat and then I can go down through in between each of the bones. Trimming that meat out in, from in between the bones. French rack. Let's get on with number two. Number two, French racks. On to that lamb shoulder. We just finished up those beautiful French racks of lamb. Now let's get on the shoulder. Let's move the neck. 
We're without our trusty assistant today, and guess what? His mic fell down. Probably happened when I was vigorously cutting through that. A little bit more. Apologies, <laughs> apologies if there's any uh, poor audio. Yeah. But rather than reshoot it, now you know what happened. It was probably when I was hand sawing through those through that saddle. Butchering and spices have gone together for centuries, and for over a decade, the bearded butchers have sold spices. In fact, spices came out before our media came out. It began with our original blend, then Chipotle, Cajun, Hot, Hollywood, Black, Butter, Brock, Zesty, and Cinnamon Swirl. 10 different flavors that we've expanded to now. They make meat better. We're online at beardofbutchers.com. We're also expanding into over 500 retailers. Some of our bigger stores are Rural King, Cow Ranch, and all your Great Lakes A stores. So look for it on the shelf at a retailer near you or go to beardofbutchers.com and get some of our spice. Now what we wanna do is we wanna take our hand saw and I'm gonna cut right down through this shoulder. The neck, you can certainly, you know what? Maybe we should do some cleaver action on the neck. A little test piece. Yeah, a lot of people use neck for all different sorts of stuff. This will make some nice cleaver action. I do know for a fact it'll always be easier to use a cleaver by cutting through the meat first. I know that for certain. So I think I need to work on my, the biggest thing I need to work on is my aim. Hey, we're getting somewhere. If it's going into a pot of soup, probably aren't gonna care that it's a little uneven. I have a feeling that this is where the term butchered came from because I feel like I'm butchering this. Boy, down there by the base of that neck, that's bones pretty sturdy. But hey, we achieved four lamb neck slices. Let's make sure we don't lose our lose my mic this time. near precision accuracy, if I don't say so myself. Just remove this spinal cord. I'm just doing this so it doesn't get smeared all over my table. I'm gonna remove these bones so this isn't gonna be in a cut anyway, but I don't wanna get all smeary. There's your two lamb shoulders. I'm gonna start, cut right through the shank and the, where the arm roast is just like that now we have two front shanks that we can add to our stash so like I need to slide things down a little bit I'm gonna run out of room on my table so there's the two front shanks now let's make a couple roasts so a couple different options here. You could take your hand saw and you can chop it off right here on both sides. Just an angle is a little bit different, but um, so you could do arm roast or you could do like a whole boneless lamb shoulder roast. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make these, um, I'm gonna leave them whole and just make them boneless. And then maybe I'll roll them in time like I did the the legs. So I got to start by just taking this, all this bone out, sort of like deboning a pork shoulder. So let's go all the way down and remove that bone. Let's get the yellow cord out. So normally on the bandsaw, I would cut these into some shoulder chops, but since I can't use the bandsaw, obviously 
we're not doing that today. So let's just make this sucker boneless. And then we'll roll it and tie it. So we're out of our element in, in more ways than one on this lamb. Okay, that bone removed. Let's get the shoulder blade out of here. If you've ever boned out a lamb shoulder, a little bit harder than a pork shoulder. Before I roll and tie this, I want to get this little gland out of the shoulder right here. I don't want to leave that in there and have somebody run into that while they're eating it. So I just wanted to get that gland, get that gland out of there. That one's ready to be rolled and tied. On to the next. on these shoulders it's gonna be a really nice boneless rolled and tied shoulder throw this into your slow cooker or your roaster and just let it go all day adding your favorite veggies in there maybe sprinkle some beer to butcher blend seasoning on it and if these uh, depending on the size of your family or how many people you're going to feed at your dinners you can always cut these down into smaller maybe cut them in half so they're smaller roasts this is probably a three and a half four pound roast as it is Pretty much wrapping up the lamb cut. You can't wait. You can't negate the work of the peons, Seth. Remember we talk about the peons? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna throw your trimmings over here. Sean and uh, Brady were working on trimming, so if you got a little room for a trimmings Good. pile. You wanna just put it right there? I, was gonna, I can't spin it. What do you think, Scott? That looks great. I'm gonna put looks your, absolutely I'm gonna fantastic. Put your head down there it on was the table. terrifying watching. Roll the clip back. My watching your thumb as that cleaver came down. I was like, I actually took a video on my phone and I was like, I ain't posting this till he's you know, done. You know what I was going to do? If I took my thumb off, I was going to text it to Brock. <laughs> Send the thumb like, to him. Here's, here's, the, here's, the result. here's your cleaver back <laughs> and my thumb. <laughs> Terrifying. Looks fantastic. I'm, I'm a little bit, you know, obviously That's like Scott said, a, a little, little bit. bit. Like this, this one's like near perfect, but um, you got to remember in the end, you're just, you're just eating it. So. You're not eating the bone either. You're not eating the bone. As long as it cooks evenly. This process right here can be done, um, you know, at home without the use of power tools like we just did. You know, if you're a prepper and you think about... Well, you have to have a lamb. You do have to have a lamb. But I'm talking about electricity and a power saw and, and et cetera. You don't necessarily have to have all that to be able to produce something like this. So this was done 
without power tools and it was all done with what you see right there on the tools of the trade t-shirt now since we did that lamb we got it processed we do have two more lambs to process um, we're going to do them the same way because we're not getting the bandsaw dirty today but scott and i are going to have a little bit of a challenge we're going to split these i've already called the brock lesnar cleaver so you can choose whether you want to use this one if we're using the same or you want to use since the, you're using that one i'm gonna i'm gonna use the other one sure and i will be separated. i will go first if you want since you knocked it out of the park on that since neither of us has ever split an animal with a cleaver, we got, you know, as you know, too, we run a full authentic butcher shop. We have to have a saleable, sellable, saleable. Sellable. We have to have a product that we can sell at the end of the day. So as we go down through this loin, um, I can't screw up the loin chops, the saddle uh, where we get the French chop. Down here, it doesn't matter as much. Well, so I do I'm, have a proposal. Depending on how bad you screw up the lamb or I screw up the lamb, the person that screws it up is responsible for cutting it. Oh boy. Because the end result, we have to have a good product to sell. Fair enough. All right, All right. let me get started here. Cleaver, lamb, Seth and Scott are each gonna split their own. Try to get myself a mark here to get going. I think nature gives you little bit of a guide right there that I can't hit. We're just blunt force butchers. That's how we do everything. I think I gotta get it started this way right here. Boo, you stink! <laughs> well, we're, we're gonna get something at the end of the day here, Seth. Somewhere there's a butcher watching this. It's like, oh my gosh. I think I just bought a lamb. <laughs> it just skipped right off, right into that loin. It's over. Poopy. Oh, we're, we're gonna have a special on ground lamb. This is truly taking us out of our element. Everybody's like, man, you guys are masters. Look at how awful. Look at that. Laugh it up, internet. Just, just, just remember, remember, I got a cleaver and you don't, so I'll come find you. We always tell our trainees it can always be made into ground meat, so ground lamb it is. I can't. You should be frightened, because you got to. Maybe I got to go like slow as smooth. This is the worst. Boy, I think I gotta, I think one side, you can save one side, just not the other. Get the struggle. Get the struggle. Oh, don't get it. Oh, that's so, <laughs> I feel like I need to apologize to the lamb. Seth, I'm not even sure if you're gonna wanna try this on the next lamb. We're committed now. We do have some parts that are sold. Hey, Brady, can you call your mother and tell her we're having lamb tonight? Watch out, Spencer. I'm ready to be done with this thing. Hey, it is what it is. Hey. You saw me try to split a lamb with the cleaver for the first time. Everybody, St Stacy, didn't you raise this lamb? I am so sorry. It's hurt your soul. So, uh, my nephew just went in the office because this was a lamb that he raised. I wonder if it would help if they were, you know, right off the kill floor and they were still warm. I, I bet you that'd help a lot. These have been in the cooler for a little bit. Uh, so I'm gonna go bone this uh, half out for you can save the for, leg for ground. I'm you actually holding part you, of it. <laughs> You can save you can save the leg. So here, let 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 me let me help you out, okay? So you did no, a phenomenal job. Actually, actually, so you did such a nice job on that that I just with the chopping and the thumbs and the lamb, 
Let's just go, let's just use the bandsaw okay to split that. this one. However you want, you can use the bandsaw, you can use that, however well, you want to do it. I'm not it. gonna use a bandsaw because we said we weren't in the front of this video, but I, since Scott is, is basically admitting to- We um, were gonna do our outro with, uh, with the, these hanging here in the background, all nicely, we, we show that side. <laughs> that doesn't look bad like that. Um, since Scott basically just handed me the handsaw and said, do it this way, that's what I'll do. Um, so I get, I guess I get the easy, easy, which way you want me to turn Spencer? You'd rather have me, you'd rather have me like that? Whatever you want Maybe it's a combination of the cleaver and the handsaw, Scott. I don't know if I'm qualified to touch that cleaver again. Look at that, he's quite the gentleman because he even came over to help me. That's the problem, you weren't holding the other one. <laughs> See the little trick I'm doing with the saw blade? Yeah, great. Look at that. I think I lost my mic again. Look, look at the precision. They're evenly balanced. Well, I concede the crown. Give me, give me my lamp. Okay. I'll we'll have to do our outro. You don't want to, don't want to hang it up? It's gonna fall off. It won't be. We'll, we'll, <laughs> it's gonna we'll look. The, with the balance. <laughs> Seth. <laughs> Seth. Get, get, out some get, get out some string. <laughs> Spencer's shaking the camera because he's laughing. So, took the butchers out of their element. I did a terrible job. I just have to own it. And I, it, it bounced. I, I personally am glad I didn't attempt it because I, I truly believe that on the, on the slaughter floor, when this animal's warm, it would be a lot easier than it's hung in the cooler. Let's just it put it this to way. Be. This tool in my hand is not a whole lot different than this tool in a non-butcher's hand, because I am just not familiar with this tool whatsoever. So you get the result. Of course, the handsaw did an amazing job. I think Seth did an amazing job of cutting yep. all of this incorporating the cleaver even though he hasn't used it before it was terrifying seeing his thumb so close to that glad it turned out okay hope it was a little bit entertaining i gotta thank brock lesnar i liked it yeah it uh and whoever the gentleman was that made it crafted this tool um yeah i put it on the stone this morning gave it a little edge and uh may incorporate it into some of my butchering in the future so thanks brock there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. We're going to finish up packing up everything and we will see you next time. And beardbutchers.com. Go get you a tools of the trade t-shirt before we take the cleaver off. <laughs> see you.